and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we are gonna talk about lawn care, how to do it the right way. And um, I know nothing about this, so uh, we have an expert here to talk to us. It's Galen Johnson from the Virginia Cooperative Extension Service. Hello. Hello, thank you for having me. You know, lawns are so important to people. We want our homes to look good. We want to have pride. Um, and one way that people do it is to just sort of randomly throw a lot of fertilizer out there. What's wrong with this picture? Well, correct. <laughs> so the picture is, if you ever read those bags of fertilizer, they cover about 5,000 square feet of lawn. And for most homeowners, we're looking at about 2,000 square feet, at least the homes that I'm looking at. And so people will buy a whole bag that's meant for 5,000 square feet and they'll fertilize their whole yard with that and they only have 2,000 square feet. So they only need about a half a bag. So what happens? Does it make the lawn healthier if they put on more? No, what happens with plants, um, plants only take up what they need and they'll leave the rest in the soil. And with phosphorus and nitrogen, if it, we have a huge rainfall, it washes off and into our local stormwater system. And what's wrong with that? There's a storm system that's gonna take care of it, right? Well, actually, it's kind of hard to filter out those nutrients with our current technology. And so it ultimately goes into the Chesapeake Bay. It causes algal blooms. And the problem with that is it takes out the nitrogen out the water and we could potentially get uh, kills of the aquatic life that's there. So we really are, and it's, I think it's so hard for people to understand. If we over fertilize, it's like, you know, overeating. I mean, you can't use all those nutrients. You, it's, a, it's a waste. And not just a waste of money, because those the fertilizer bags are expensive, but it does harm to the environment. It creates extra cost on the other end, and it, and it damages the wildlife, the health of the bay that we all depend on for recreation and food and all kinds of things. Yes, that is correct. And like I said, everything is just washing off and we're having issues with the Chesapeake Bay. Um, right now, we're, cap we're helping out farmers capture their nutrient loads. Of course, the less amount of money they can spend, the better, the more money that's in their pocket. But we're really trying to capture the residents and really bring that idea of conservation to them. So how do you do that? <laughs> how do you get to people and help them figure out what their lawn needs? Okay, so it is it's very difficult to reach out to everyone, but I did come up with a fescue squad program. It is through Virginia Cooperative Extension's uh, Virginia Healthy Lawns program. And essentially, myself and a master gardener will come out to your home and we will take the measurements, we'll give you a fertilizer recommendation, lime recommendations, and best management practice to take care of your, your yard. So this is a customized program to my yard, which is gonna have different amounts of shade and pine trees or a hardwood tree. Everything is different about everybody's lawn. There's some general things you can probably say about you know Hampton soils, but you're gonna look at it. Yes, so last year, um, the smallest home as far as square footage was about 2,000 square feet and the largest yard that we saw was over 10,000 square feet. And so there are some differences. People have a cool season lawn such as uh, tall fescue, Kentucky bluegrass, and other folks have warm season lawns uh, such as zoysia grass, um, center pea grass, um, Bermuda grass, and you have to treat those lawns differently. And other people have weeds. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm naming any names here, but you know, once it's mowed, it looks green, but the rest of the time, not so much. Yes. Well, okay, so we are in this weird zone mm -hmm. where both the cool season and warm season grasses work um, for a lot of people. So if I don't know anything about my lawn, how do I know what I have? Like if I bought an existing house, didn't put the lawn in, how do I look at it and go, okay, this is fescue? Okay, so you can definitely bring in a grass sample into the office. We're at 1919 oh. Commerce Drive, Suite 340. We're off of uh, Coliseum in between Mercury and Pine Chapel Roads. Um, you can definitely bring in a sample and if it's something that I can't see through my eyes, I will send it off to some specialists at Virginia Tech and Dr. Mike Goatley will get that identified for us. But mostly you can, you, you can kind of tell by whether your lawn turns brown in the winter, whether it's got those, what, like shoots or whether it's kind of the thick sticking up grass. Those are my technical terms. <laughs> I need your help. So correct. Um, generally, 
our cool season lawns, the tall fescue, it is green right now and it has been greening since about February. And it'll continue to stay green until about May, maybe early June. And then all of a sudden, your warm season lawn is gonna kick in. Uh, that should start greening up in May, lasting through the summer, and then it'll go dormant when it starts getting cooler again. Okay, and they do really need to be treated differently. They have slightly different growing seasons. You mm -hmm. put things on at different times. Yes, so we're definitely getting to the point where we're backing off of fertilizing for cool season lawns. Um, now you can't continue to fertilize during the summer, but understand that that plant is gonna be stressed because it likes the cool temperatures. Um, but, and then when you transition into the warm season uh, turfs, that's when you really want to start fertilizing that grass. Okay, so if I am part of your uh, fescue program, you come out and you look, you mm -hmm. say, yes, it is a fescue, mm -hmm. and you give me kind of a plan for how and when? Yes, and so we give you a detailed analysis of what to apply and when to apply it. And you take an actual soil sample, which yes. I know every extension agent I've ever talked to says, <laughs> don't guess, get a soil sample, never done it. Why should I do it? Yes, because it establishes a baseline for what you actually do need. You may fertilize every year, and you may find that your soil pH is very low or very high. The issue with that is the nutrients are very hard to pull off of the soil by the roots, and so they can't use it. And so maybe you need a lime application to adjust your soil pH. And that's not unusual in Hampton, as I understand it, that a lime is frequently required. Yes, uh, Virginia soils tend to be a little acidic, and so we want to raise that pH. That's the optimal pH for the plant to use. Okay. So you would do the soil sample and figure all this out, right? Yes, I have. <laughs> A, a whole textbook of calculations that's needed to figure out um, the, the kind of fertilizer that you need, how much uh, lime that you need, um, phosphorus, nitrogen, potassium, all of that good stuff that's needed for a good healthy lawn. Now do you just talk about nutrients or do you also talk about um, pre-emergent and all the other stuff that I see at the at the garden store these days. Yes, we certainly do talk about weed management because as you said, a lot of people grow weeds and they grow them well. Yeah, I do, it's great. <laughs> yes, and we definitely give you feedback on not only weeds, but any disease problems that you have. If we're finding that you're having a pest management issue in, re in regards to insects, we'll give you feedback on that. We'll also determine um, mowing height uh, best practices as far as uh, proper liming and applicating the fertilizer as well. Yeah, because if you just dump it on there, um, probably not really the way to go. Correct. <laughs> no, and I have seen it done before. Okay, so generally speaking, if you can just give us a few tips about, so, so we have the fescue, which is the one you call? Cool season. Cool season. Mm -hmm. And um, that means it does better in the winter, right? It, it doesn't turn completely brown all winter, is that right? Correct, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it, it kind of subsides when it's really cold. It does have an optimal minimum that it needs in order to have shoot and root, root growth. But we're generally talking about early spring, later, later spring, but it, it survives Like if the I've winter. had to mow already, that means I probably have the yep. fescue. Yes, it, yes. It is growing, something is growing out there. Yes, exactly. Okay, so for those of us with that kind of a lawn, we want to think about what right now during the spring? You want to think about your fertilizer program. Uh, we, we're definitely still in the season to continue fertilization. Um, as long as we don't continue having these 80 degree days, but I don't foresee that coming. <laughs> but you can definitely continue to fertilize. Um, I also recommend aeration that helps the fertilizer and water get down to those roots where it's really needed, okay. especially if your soil is compacted. I recommend aer aeration. Also a proper mowing height, um, anywhere from two and a half to four inches for your cool season grasses. That encourages a nice thick canopy and it shades out any kind of weed growth. So, and a lot of people mow closer than that. Is that, is that a fair statement? Many people um, cut, cut off too much at a time of yeah, that grass. Yeah, I, I can say that. Um, and really, 
that short growth is where you want it for the warm season grasses. They handle that shortcut a lot better than better. the cool season. Okay. Um, and then there was something else I was going to ask you. Oh, mulching mower. Mm -hmm. I, I am theoretically, every time I mow, um, putting some of those nutrients back in. Mm -hmm. Probably not enough though, right? Right, and it's kind of hard to capture that because they slowly decompose over time mm -hmm. and those nutrients aren't released instantly as opposed to a, or as opposed to a um, fertilizer over the counter. And so it is it's great to leave the lawn clippings in there. They will decompose over time. Um, but as far as gauging the nutrient amounts that's gone into the soil, that's kind of hard to determine, and that's why we recommend a soil test. And, and the fertilizer is a little more, it is more quickly absorbed. It is designed to, to fertilize now as opposed to over the very, very long term. Correct. Okay. Correct. So how do we, how do we get you to come out? <laughs> so you can <laughs> Not just to my house, they want to know too. So definitely you can call the Virginia Cooperative Extension Office at 757-727-1401 or you can shoot me an email at galenj at virginiatech or vt.edu. And um, there is a cost for this because there's a processing of the soil test and all that. How much does it cost? So it's $30 for the program. Once we set you up and we're setting up for select Wednesdays in April and May, um, we'll set you up for a calendar date and we will come out in the afternoon and do the process, work through the process of the fescue squad program. That's a darn good deal. <laughs> yes, yes. And if you do require an additional soil test, it's an extra $10. Okay. And require might mean my backyard has a lot of pine trees and it's probably very different than my front yard, which gets sun or something like that. Correct. Um, different soil tests requires uh, that you are managing your property, property differently. Mm -hmm. um, so say you do have those differences in the front yard and you know, your backyard is complete, has a complete access to sunlight, well, those are going to get treated differently. Okay. But for the most part, one soil test should take care of your entire yard. All right. Well, thank you. Are there, is there anything else before we close that you want to add about healthy lawns or how to, how to do a better job for us homeowners who do care about the environment but also want a green lawn? Yes, I just want to just emphasize once again to just read that packaging and if it says <laughs> that it treats up to 5,000 square feet and you only have a lawn that's 2,000 square feet, um, just do the math. You only need half a bag. Why do they sell it in the giant bags then? Well, everybody <laughs> needs to make money, but it is up to us as extension agents to provide that valuable education to homeowners that you have to look at that package. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching. I hope you will pay attention to what you're putting on your lawn, make it green without creating that extra runoff that can harm the bay. And if you have questions about what you do need for your lawn, do call the Extension Service and have them come out and look at it. It's a great program. Thanks for watching.